it's stack time and if you've got a bunch of ones and zeros that you need converted into beautiful analog sound this device might interest you this is the smsl su9 ultra and yes the ultra version is the third iteration of the su9 dac series let's get it What's cracking, audio fans? It's David here from Prime Audio Reviews. So the SU9 Ultra, this one is coming in at a price of $499. And the DAC chip of choice for this one, we've got that new AK flagship with the AK4191 plus the AK4499EX combo. You know the one I'm talking about. Oh, what a mouthful. So first things first, let's have a look at the exterior and then we'll talk about the uh, menu and, and then finally the sound. So as far as I know, the chassis is just the same as on previous SU9s and in case you're wondering, no, I did not try the SU9 or the SU9 Pro. But basically you have this plain black aluminium chassis with a matte finish. Surprise, surprise, it is a DAC after all. And SU9, I mean SMSL, tends to be fairly minimalistic in their design approach. So that's what it looks like on the top. So on the front here we've got the familiar SMSL display. We've seen that before on several other models. And we've got a volume knob which also doubles as a button. So this is the power button. If you give it a quick press, it will take you into the settings menu. And yeah, I love the SMSL menus. They are so much more intuitive than the topping ones, but I digress. Anyway, let's have a look at the inputs. I'll show you these on the back in a second, but you've got USB, Bluetooth, optical and coaxial. So pretty good. Not quite as diverse as the DO300 inputs, but pretty good nonetheless. So we'll stick with USB. You can choose which outputs you want to use, either all of them, the balanced uh, XLR outputs or the unbalanced RCA outputs. Once again, we see these PCM filters, which pretty much do nothing, but you know how it is. We like to have them just in case. DSD filter sound color mode, which also doesn't do a whole lot, but it's nice to have nonetheless. There is a pre mode that can be used as a preamp or it can be a fixed output. And apart from that, you get your usual other stuff in there. But let's come back and we'll have a look at the back of the unit. So that's what it looks like. Bluetooth antenna, USB Type-C input, an optical input, coaxial input. And for your outputs, analog outputs, you get a balanced XLR and single-ended RCA. So like I said, we've got inside that AKM DAC chip. By the way, this is an MQA compatible DAC. So if you, you're into title MQA, SMSL is one of the few brands that continually supports that format. Also in attendance, of course, is an XMOS XU316, which of course means that you this supports all those high-end formats such as PCM 32-bit, 768 kilohertz, and DSD 512 native. And as for the Bluetooth, uh, it's only 5.0. I'm not sure why it's not 5.3. Maybe they just use the older one to keep the cost down. But regardless of that. All our favorite wireless audio codecs are still supported, including aptX, aptX HD, and LDAC. And during my testing, the Bluetooth worked perfectly. And especially with LDAC and aptX HD, the Bluetooth sounds pretty darn good. All right, so let's get on to the sound now. And when I first tried out this unit, I kind of stumbled upon something unexpected because I've checked out quite a few SMSL products before. DO300, DO200 Mark II, the DO300EX, etc. So I, I had a pretty clear idea of what to expect in terms of audio performance. But the SU9 Ultra here totally changed the game. Uh, right from my first listen, it caught me off guard. It's... I would say it's in a league of its own compared to other SMSL units that I've tested personally, even surpassing the excellent DO300EX, which by the way also uses the same AKM combo DACs in there. 
Now, at first, I thought this difference might be a synergy between the SU9 Ultra and the Topping L70 headphone amp that I had it connected to, but that didn't make any sense because I've used that L70 with other SMSL DACs in the past. Now, at the time of my initial testing, I was using the Moondrop Para Planar Magnetic headphones, and I had been testing those already for a couple of weeks, so I was fully attuned to the sound. But when I added the SU9 upstream, the Para headphones suddenly came alive, almost as if they had just like leveled up. Instrument separation improved, the sound stage sounded more organized, and the overall resolution became clearer as well. Spacing between instruments and vocals is not just spacious on that on this DAC, it's a void painted in obsidian. It offers this sort of black background that lets each note emerge with crystalline precision. This DAC is like the maestro of silence, where the absence of sound becomes as defining as the notes themselves. The SU9 Ultra exudes quiet confidence. It doesn't need to shout to be heard. It's got this robustness to the sound. However, it's also got a very calm demeanor and the confidence it exudes is palpable. It's just got this very reassured, confident sound with magnificent staging. And I would say that the SU9 Ultra has a sort of very analog-like allure. It doesn't sound sort of super digitized. It's almost, you could imagine you're listening to a vinyl record. It's a very analog and organic sound. So it marries clarity with an organic warmth. It's sort of like a paradoxical fusion of precise articulation and an analog soul. So let's do a quick comparison with the SMSL D0300, which is actually a little bit more expensive. I think that's like 540, maybe I could be wrong. Whereas this one is 499. Now the main differences on the outside is the D0300 has extra L2S and AES digital inputs. Whereas this has only optical, USB and coaxial. Both of these DACs sound great. Both the SU9 Ultra and the DO300 sound great. But to my ears, this one comes out ahead in this comparison. I would say the D3, DO300's staging is not as well defined. The background is blacker on this unit and there is more spacing between instruments. And in addition to that, the SU9 Ultra's bass notes are tighter. It has improved layering in the lows, and but the bass carries just as much weight and impact. Mid-range and treble notes have greater density on this one. And while that doesn't create the most expansive stage, it might not be quite as wide as a DO300, but it does um, contribute to improved instrument separation which in turn gives you better spatial imaging. So I would say if you need either L2S or AES inputs then the DO300 is still an excellent DAC but um, otherwise if you don't if you're happy with the other inputs that this one offers I'd say this one is a slight upgrade in audio quality and I don't have a lot more else to say honestly I was not expecting to be as taken by the sound as I was with this one like when a new DAC lands on my desk I'm just like okay here's another neutral DAC but actually this one really stands out at least compared to those other SMSL DACs that I was mentioning before. There's just something a bit, little bit different about this one that makes it special to my ears and for that reason um, I really like it a lot and I'm going to give it my full recommendation. So let's wrap it up. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, Parfam audio file style. If you're new here or if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider a sub hitting that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below. What do you think about the, um, you know, the ESS AKM eternal debate? Is there a difference? Which one do you prefer? And uh, have you heard the S9, SU9 Ultra? And if you have, what do you think? And uh, yeah, that's about it. So until next time, I'll see you later.